Hi everyone and welcome to Fundamentals of Criminal Justice, uh, which is going to be a regular segment from Criminal Justice Matters. I've recently received a number of requests from people asking whether or not I can explain fundamental concepts to what underpins a criminal justice system. And I'm going to start with the presumption of innocence because I think fundamentally it's the most important and I think it is under a great deal of threat in um, in society today. So what is the presumption of innocence? Well, in a nutshell, it's the idea that everybody is innocent until proven guilty. This is what's called a cornerstone of adversarial justice. All of our justice system mechanisms start from the idea that everyone is presumed innocent. This presumption should therefore underpin our approach to criminal justice, but I think we should ask some very severe questions of whether or not it actually does. So I said it underpins adversarial justice, but what is adversarial justice? Well, generally there are two approaches to criminal justice, adversarialism and inquisitorialism. Adversarialism is based on the search for proof. What can you prove about a particular allegation. Both sides present their evidence equally at trial. Lawyers play a fundamental role in the adversarial process. The court is the forum, the forum, sorry, where guilt of the defendant is decided. Inquisitorialism, on the other hand, uh, is seen to be a search for the truth. And the way that the truth is arrived at is the fact that evidence is gathered in a dossier from the police guided by a prosecutor or an instructing magistrate generally. The trial itself, whereas it, it's the form in which guilt is decided in the adversarial setting, the trial in the inquisitorial setting is basically a review of the evidence, okay? It's far more of a process. Lawyers play a secondary role in, um, in inquisitorial justice. There's no real trial as it were in terms of prosecution battling defense so we uh, in england and wales and in common law countries such as the united states we have an adversarial justice system the european convention on human rights govern our fair trial rights and under article 6 of the european convention everyone is entitled to a fair and public hearing within a reasonable time by an independent and impartial tribunal uh, established by law. And everyone charged with a criminal offence should be presumed innocent until proved guilty according to the law. So that presumption of innocence is enshrined in our human rights. So some key points. <clears throat> it's for the prosecution to prove the guilt of the defendant. The defendant does not have to prove their innocence. This is called the golden thread of criminal procedure, and it will run throughout the whole process. And uh, whilst the golden thread comes from a case of Warmington in England and Wales, um, it's replicated in other common law systems. The establishing of the defendant's guilt is determined beyond reasonable doubt. It's a very, very high standard, but I question whether or not in this day and age, we still use that threshold of beyond reasonable doubt, or if, that, if that's been diluted. Ultimately, you are innocent until a court declares otherwise. But does this really exist? We have, obviously, with the advent of social media and 24-hour news channels, you know, this whole idea of no smoke without fire. And I want to give you a couple of case examples uh, now. But firstly, I need to ask you, do you think people really believe in the presumption of innocence? If someone's arrested and you see something on television or in a media report, do you believe they are innocent until proven guilty or have the public already made up their mind? This is Cliff Richard or Sir Cliff Richard. And in August 2014, um, he was at his holiday home in Portugal watching the BBC News and he saw his home in Berkshire in England being raided by the police as it was being filmed by the BBC. So that was August 2014. We can skip forward to uh, May 2016 
and the Crown Prosecution Service of England and Wales decide that there's insufficient evidence to charge Cliff Richard. But he's had almost two years of this hanging over his head, this idea that, you know, was he involved in this historic sex offence scandal um, that ran through England and Wales in, in um, sort of 2013 and, and onwards. There was insufficient evidence to charge Richard. He was never charged with any form of, of offence. And in 2016, the BBC eventually apologised to him. He received £210,000 in damages, as well as £850,000 um, toward his legal fees. But he still felt he was substantially out of pocket because he had to instruct various lawyers to effectively refute these allegations. This is Paul Gambaccini. Paul Gambaccini, um, again, under the same sort of Operation U tree that Richard was investigated under, he was arrested in November of 2013 on suspicion of historic sex abuse. In October 2014, no charges were brought against Paul Gambaccini. However, he spent 11 months in this limbo waiting for this to happen. He published a book on his experiences with the criminal justice system whilst, whilst waiting for any decision, and obviously no charges were brought against Paul Gambaccini. In February of 2016, the Irish Supreme Court used a review of his book uh, that was based on his experiences to discuss the undermining of the presumption of innocence. Okay, He was being tried through the media, his name was being dragged through the mud. And the Irish Supreme Court sort of pointed out that this seems to be especially rife in cases of sex offences. In settlement, he re received an undisclosed amount and the CPS reached an agreement with Gambaccini without any admission of liability. The third person that we're going to discuss today is Christopher Jeffries. Uh, Christopher Jeffries uh, was arrested after the murder of a 25-year-old architect in Bristol uh, named Joanna Yates. Jeffries was Yates' landlord and he was um, arrested a couple of weeks after, after she was reported missing and then subsequently her body was found. Within five or six days of Jeffries' arrest, the Evening Standard ran a story um, expressing uh, concern with how Jeffries was being portrayed in the media. The Daily Express were running stories that quoted uh, former, former pupils of, him, he, of his, he was a schoolmaster, saying that he was a nutty professor and that he creeped pupils out. The Daily, the Daily Telegraph ran a story claiming that Jeffries was a fan of dark and violent avant-garde films. People believed he was guilty because he looked the type. He looked strange and a bit eccentric and he fitted that mould and his name was was dragged through the mud. Within three weeks of Jeffrey's arrest, the actual killer was apprehended uh, and arrested and was sub subsequently convicted at trial. Jeffrey's received an eight-figure sum from eight separate newspapers for how he was portrayed and how his name was dragged through the mud. What all of these people have in common is the idea that the presumption of innocence didn't exist for them. People believed that they were guilty. People looked at them and thought, yeah, they must be caught up in this. And I think that's massively problematic because these are high profile cases that we hear about. This must exist, this concern must exist with other cases in our justice system. So is there a presumption of innocence in the adversarial system? Arguably, no. It does not exist. 24 hour news stations and social media means we're often quick to convict those accused of crime, often before they are charged by authorities. And in the cases that we've seen, um, sort of examined very briefly today, no charges were ever brought. There's this idea of no smoke without fire. You know, there, there seems to be an innate trust in both the police and the prosecution. It's believed that they have the right man and therefore we should trust uh, what they're saying and who they are charging with these offences without following the due process protocols and going through the system fairly. 
The presumption of innocence is fundamental to justice. It deserves protection and the need and deserves to be taken extremely seriously by everybody. Any one of us could be accused of a crime and I'm sure we would want to be presumed innocent. So I think the presumption of innocence is something that's worthwhile to protect and something that needs protecting. And that sums up the crash course in the presumption of innocence. Please join me again next week where we will be discussing another fundamental element of adversarial justice and testing whether or not it exists in society today. Thanks for watching.